This is Donald Trump, the 45th and soon to be 47th president of the United States. On Saturday, March 16th, Trump held a rally in Vandalia, Ohio, where he spoke about one of the biggest threats to not only the U.S. auto industry, but to American manufacturing as a whole. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think, they think, that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal, those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100 percent tariff on every single car that comes across the line. So President Trump is talking about Chinese EV companies like BYD, i.e. build your dreams. BYD happens to be the largest EV maker in the world. Yes, even bigger than Tesla. Currently, there is a 27.5% tariff on Chinese vehicles sold in the United States. And there is a very good reason why. In a report on the matter, the Alliance for American Manufacturing writes, this is an auto industry backed by the Chinese state. It has invested heavily in foreign markets in order to access more of them. And there is cause for alarm that Chinese vehicles and parts will only increase their access to the U.S. market, overcoming existing tariffs and evading existing trade enforcement measures to directly challenge domestic automakers and threaten the jobs of millions of American manufacturing workers. And the worry that these vehicles from Chinese EV companies could dominate the U.S. auto market is very real. For example, this BYD E2 Honor Edition starts at the low, low price of $12,500. And the BYD Dolphin EV Honor Edition starts at a mere $9,700. The Alliance for American Manufacturing has this to say on the matter. Fulfilling a plan that's been in the works for decades to dominate its competition in the global auto market, the Chinese Communist Party has weaponized massive state subsidies and the use of forced labor to enable Chinese companies to sell their goods at cutthroat rates around the world, all with the ultimate intent of annihilating auto manufacturers in America and elsewhere. Existing U.S. tariffs and trade action have staved off an extinction-level event for the U.S. auto industry, which is central to both our economic and national security. But China's predatory trade practices know no bounds. Beijing is already utilizing Mexico as a backdoor for circumventing tariffs for imports to the United States. And that's correct. In February 2024, BYD announced plans to build an electric vehicle plant in Mexico. And this has sparked major concern among labor groups here in the United States, because under the USMCA trade agreement, there would be no tariff on BYD vehicles made in Mexico. And even Democrats know this is bad. In March 2024, Senators Gary Peters, Debbie Stabenow, and Sherrod Brown wrote a letter to the Biden administration, allowing heavily subsidized Chinese vehicles to enter the U.S. marketplace would endanger American automotive manufacturing. Artificially low-priced Chinese EVs flooding the U.S. would cost thousands of American jobs and endanger the survival of the U.S. automotive industry as a whole. So not only is this an economic threat, but it's also a national security threat. And currently, the Biden administration is not really addressing it. But President Trump is. And you're not going to be able to sell those guys if I get elected. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. So the story here should have been that Trump was planning to be even tougher on China. But instead. At a rally yesterday, Donald Trump predicted a bloodbath if he doesn't win in November. Trump makes new inflammatory remarks. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. Um, do you think Trump's comments about the potential bloodbath were dangerous in any way? 
Over the weekend, Mr. Trump sparking controversy at a rally saying there will be a, quote, bloodbath if he loses in November. He warned at a rally over the weekend that there would be a bloodbath if he's not elected. There will be a, quote, bloodbath if he isn't reelected. A warning of a bloodbath for the country if he's defeated. However, you saw the entire clip. Trump was very clearly talking about the very real threat of an economic bloodbath for the country because the U.S. auto sector accounts for 3% of our GDP. But instead, the media is just wasting their time trying to convince you that Trump was promising a literal bloodbath if he loses in November. Sad, really. I want to start by getting your reaction to Donald Trump's comments about a bloodbath. Do you think that those comments were appropriate? Is it the understanding of those in Trump's circle that using rhetoric like bloodbath when talking about car imports is part of a conscious purposeful effort or just something he says? The president was clearly talking. Uh, about the impact of, of imports devastating the American automotive industry. Was so, that clear to you? Because uh, it was I, 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 a little I think muddled. It was. But was it really muddled, Margaret? <laughs> the fact is that it's only muddled if you want it to be muddled. Anyway, if you think that was dishonest, watch this exchange between CNN's Jim Acosta and commentator Alice Stewart. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. And if you look at it in context, also where it says, talking about the auto industry and a 100% yeah. tariff on every car that's brought into this right. country, he's talking about the auto industry and the impact the Biden policies have on the auto industry. You and don't when think he, he just meant the auto I industry. Truly, I believe you, you when he that. uses the term bloodbath, he is talking about this in an economic sense. Jim Acosta, one of the most dishonest journalists in history, is shocked that someone could possibly be objective with Donald Trump. You don't think that. You couldn't possibly think that. Look at the word uh, bloodbath. But he says what it, when that's going to be the least a of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. It, we're talking about uh, the other definition of bloodbath is a severe uh, loss and reversal, and this is used all of the time when we're talking about the stock market and the economy. And he's talking. Look, you, I, I think this is a tremendous disservice to I people. I love you, Alice, is, but I mean, you, uh, and but, I love you too, Jim. But, but I think but this. Let, is, let me tell you, uh, I, I really think because you know, was it out of context when you said very fine people on look, both I, sides? So not only is he going to push the bloodbath hoax, but he's also digging up the very fine people hoax. You know, the one where the media claimed that Trump praised white supremacists, which is particularly egregious because Jim Acosta was in the lobby of Trump Tower and knows what Trump did and didn't say. They, started, they showed up in Charlottesville Excuse me. to protest. Excuse me. They didn't themselves down as the And you had some very bad people in that group. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. And I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. Was it out of context when you said very fine people on Look both out. sides? Now, since the Democrats can't run on Joe Biden's terrible record from the last three years, that means that it's time to ramp up the fear-mongering to 11. So the Biden-Harris administration put out a statement that reeks of desperation. Tonight, Donald Trump said there would be a bloodbath if he wasn't elected, and that if he lost, there would be no more elections. But here's what Trump actually said. If this election isn't won, I'm not sure that you'll ever have another election in this country. Does that make sense? I don't think you're going to have another election in this country. If we don't win this election, I don't think you're going to have another election or certainly not an election that's meaningful. So not quite what the old Biden Obama campaign accused him of. Now, is what Trump said hyperbolic? Maybe. But if you're going to be critical of Trump over it, you have to be critical of Joe Biden. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. There's something else at stake. Democracy itself, in our bones, we know democracy at risk is at risk. Trump and the extreme MAGA Republicans quote a clear and present danger to our democracy. This MAGA threat is a threat to the brick and mortar of our democratic institutions. Our democracy at ri is at risk. Their extreme agenda, if carried out, would fundamentally alter the institutions of American democracy as we know it. 
We must be stronger, more determined, and more committed to saving American democracy than MAGA Republicans are to destroying American democracy. So to be crystal clear, Joe Biden is saying that if Trump wins in November, that he and the MAGA Republicans will destroy American democracy. But this is nothing new because Joe Biden has been saying this for the last two and a half years. But I'll tell you what, Democrats, I'll get upset about what Trump says when you get upset about what Joe Biden says. I won't hold my breath, though. Trump's team claims that Trump's use of the word bloodbath was taken out of context, was he? No. But we, we have... We just have to win this election because he's even predicting a bloodbath. What does that mean? He's going to exact a bloodbath? When the former president, who's already incited violence among his followers, says that there's going to be a bloodbath what, after the election, if he does not win, he is telling us what he is going to do. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. I'm, I'm reading a lot lately about people concerned about more violence here in the U.S. promulgated by Donald Trump. And when he does that, you can see that he's serious about it. He was using that language in the context of a discussion of the auto industry, but his meaning was ambiguous. What did Trump really mean? Was he just talking about cars or was he actually threatening violence? Yes, his comments about bloodbath came shortly after he was talking about the automotive industry. But again, that'll be the least of it. That's the tell. Yes, he was talking about the auto industry, but read between the lines, America. Trump is akin to a dangerous murderer. Experts who study extremism say the former president's bloodbath remark is part of an escalating campaign of violent rhetoric. Even by Trump's standards, Donald Trump's speech over the weekend was dark and menacing. Former President Donald Trump uh, continues ramping up his dark rhetoric ahead of the 2024 election. He kind of just continued to do what he does, which is to use dark rhetoric. Extremism experts say it's the latest example of Donald Trump using violent rhetoric to appeal to his supporters. Donald Trump increasingly sounding like a fascist, a dictator, mimicking them. Now, there were so many dishonest takes in the bloodbath matter that I can't show them all, but I do want to take a moment and feature and celebrate some actual objective ones. The fact of the matter is, when you watch the headlines talking about Donald Trump, they were mischaracterizing his comments. Yes, he said what he said, but it was taken completely out of context because he was talking about the auto industry and business with China and how if he's not elected, it's going to be problematic in terms of doing business with China as it pertains to the auto industry. Presenting Trump's statement as one in which he's calling for a bloodbath if he fails to get elected is incredibly dishonest. In this particular case, he was clearly talking about tariffs. He said it in an economic context, not guilty. We're sitting here talking about a word that he used that four days ago we were all using to talk about what happened at the RNC that's in headlines about the markets on Wall Street. And Sarah Isger of the Dispatch is right. When it came to the long overdue reorganization at the Republican National Committee, the media had no problem using the term. Mediaite described it as the RNC bloodbath. The Guardian called it an absolute bloodbath. Politico not only called it a bloodbath, but they said that the Trump team slashes staff. And even the DNC war room, which is not a threatening violent name at all, called it a bloodbath caused by Trump's extreme mega minions. Oh my God, I, I just don't know how much more of this violent rhetoric the country can take. And it wasn't just radical left-wing websites using the term, but it was also the mainstream cable news networks. But as Politico.com reports tonight on the, quote, bloodbath at the RNC. A columnist in the Arizona Republic has referred to your primary challenger uh, in this race that you are in now as part of the, quote, MAGA drive to take over Maricopa County. And the headline refers to it as an impending bloodbath. Headlines calling it a, quote, bloodbath and a, quote, mob-like takeover. And recently, MSNBC's Ali Vitali and Dasha Burns had no problem using violent imagery when speaking about Trump beating Nikki Haley in the primaries. 
not only is it going to be a bloodbath, but after they leave New Hampshire, it's a bloodbath on her home turf. That's really and tough. And Trump has left a lot of corpses in his wake. I mean, we yeah. can count the bodies, right? So to be clear, using terms like bloodbath or corpses is not violent rhetoric, unless you're Donald Trump, of course. Now again, there are just way too many bloodbath clips to feature in one video, but I do want to show you one of the most ridiculous ones from MSNBC's Lawrence O'Donnell. Donald Trump actually got applause from the most uninformed voters who have ever listened to a political speech when they clapped for the bloodbath and they clapped for Donald Trump's promise to double the price of new cars in America. Yes. He predicted both of those things at the same time, doubling the price of cars manufactured in Mexico and sold in the United States and the bloodbath. Now, if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole. That's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. Did you hear the crowd applauding the bloodbath? Yeah, me neither, because Lawrence O'Donnell completely made it up. But more importantly, he lied about what Trump was saying about tariffs. Okay, so while promising a bloodbath, Donald Trump promised that a $40,000 Ford manufactured in Mexico will now cost $80,000 next year. But you've now heard the Trump clip twice. Trump didn't say that he was going to put tariffs on Mexican-made cars from American companies. He never said Ford or Chevy. Translation, Lawrence O'Donnell is a f***ing liar. Anyway, the absolute worst take on the bloodbath matter came from Morning Joe's Joe Scarborough. Hours after Trump's bloodbath remarks, Scarborough posted the following on X. Donald Trump's America, and he is proud of it. Promised another bloodbath if he loses again. In the same post, Scarborough embedded a video of J6 footage. The next morning, Elon Musk replied to Scarborough's post writing, Jan 6 was not a bloodbath by any definition. And Trump was referring to job losses in the auto industry when he used that word. Your post is extremely misleading. Soon after, Scarborough deleted his tweet. Womp womp. And that should have been the end of it. But instead of letting it go, Scarborough doubled down by going on a crazy curse-filled rant proclaiming that no one could possibly believe that it was about the auto industry. And these idiots uh, on Twitter, uh, these idiots uh, on, 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 on cable news, these idiots on Sunday shows, going, well, I have our presence, you know, he was talking only about the auto industry and this is one more, it's just bullshit. Let me say that at 6.15 a.m., it's just bullshit. He knew what he was doing. We're not stupid. Americans aren't stupid. He was talking about a bloodbath. Sometimes a bloodbath means a bloodbath. And they call Trump unhinged. When Biden loses in November, this guy is going to go berserk, just like he did in 2016. And I'm here for it. Given the, the, the tone of the rest of the speech, bloodbath, I'm not so sure he's talking about the niceties of international trade. But again, I've never really heard people discuss macroeconomics uh, in terms of bloodbaths. I think the dictionary's definition of bloodbath would like a word, Joe. I've never really heard people discuss macroeconomics uh, in terms of bloodbaths. Anyway, I think that's about enough for now. So follow me on X at Don't Walk Run. And while you're at it, subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for tuning in. And I hope to see you next time, if there is next time. <laughs>